Everyone at Hogwarts was disturbed by the attack on Mrs. Norris and the mysterious words scrawled on the wall. Rumors and speculations spread. Hermione in particular was especially affected. Ron and Harry became sure that she was up to something, but whatever it was, she remained tight-lipped. We have to get to charms class, Harry, and I have an idea. An idea about what? We should ask Professor Flitwick about the Chamber of Secrets. He's bound to know something. Let's go. So in the book, they asked the history of magic teacher Professor Binns about the Chamber of Secrets. In the movie, they asked Professor McGonagall about it, and now in the game, they're going to ask Professor Flitwick about it. You'd think in any given detail between the three mediums of media would be consistent. Hurry God up, damn it, Hermione! Charms. Coming, Hermione! How the fuck did you do that? I wonder if I can jump past the stairs in this game. Well, not there. The game freezes you in place until the stairs stop moving. Okay, so I can do it, it just keeps me afloat though. That's alright, I guess. Not entertaining, but thoughtful of the developers to add that safeguard, I suppose. Ack! Blast it, Potter! I'll get you! Yeah, I guess that's what I get for intentionally bumping into him. Property asset move along. Class is connected to this quarter? Yeah, that's not creepy at all. I guess I should go in... or... Aha! Yes. Yeah, I'm sure no one will mind if I mess around knocking cauldrons over down here. Oh shit, Filch was watching. Stupid ass squib can't reach me in here. Her money is like, what the Welcome fuck were you doing in there? Class. Today we shall be learning the scourge charm. Yes, Miss Granger. I was just wondering if you could uh tell us something about the Chamber of Secrets. I deal with charms, Miss Granger, not myths and legends. Please, Professor, we all want to hear. Oh, very well. There were four founders of Hogwarts, Godric Gryffindor, Salazar Slytherin, Helga Hufflepuff, and Rowena Ravenclaw. Slytherin wanted to admit only the wizard-born students to Hogwarts. The other founders refused, and as a result, Slytherin left the school. Yes, Miss Granger? He built a secret chamber in the castle of which the other founders knew nothing. Why would you ask the professor to tell you all about the Chamber of Secrets and then interrupt him to add your own details that you already researched? One day, Slytherin's true heir will return to open the chamber and control the horror within. And then, all who are not wizard-born will be purged from Hogwarts. All nonsense, of course. Now, back to magic reality. <laughs> back to magic reality, he says. I love it. Glad to, Professor. Filch is still pacing around outside. Try not to focus on all this Chamber of Secrets balderdash. Concentrate on the symbol in front of you. The wand is about uh, to move it uh, the symbol. Yeah, and I'm about to skip over all this because I really need to get over this thing where I keep in as much of the video as possible. I'm not going to be able to do commentary on all these for a couple minutes each. You must successfully hit all of the arrows in sequence. Ready to try? Round one, go. Well done! You've completed all of the necessary exercises. Fifteen points to Gryffindor. That was thirty well points total. Done, Mr. Potter, you've successfully learned Scourge. Now it's time for you to test your newly learned knowledge in the Scourge Spell Challenge. Welcome, Harry Potter, to my Scourge Challenge. To complete the challenge, you must find the completion star, which can be found several floors below us. Try to get to it as quickly as you can. If the challenge timer reaches zero before you have the completion star, you lose the challenge. If only I could just jump down. It'd Along take way, some fall we'll damage, I don't mind. Stars. Collecting challenge stars will boost your timer and score. I highly recommend you try to find all of them. Try to get the completion star with as many seconds remaining as possible. The higher your score is when you complete the challenge, the more house points I will award you. Lependo! Lependo! 
What if the suits of armor can feel pain and casting Fulpendo on them to get beans is the same as punching someone so hard that they projectile vomit chunks of food? There's a vomit flavored bean, isn't there? They can vomit up beans multiple times in a row. That's gotta suck. Ectoplasm is an unpleasant greenish substance left behind by certain ghostly beings. In some places, it will block doorways and openings. You can cast Scourge to get rid of it. Left behind by ghosts? Scourge! Well, they float all over the place. Having a large mass of it in one doorway makes me think some ghost had explosive diarrhea while somersaulting rapidly in midair under that stone arch. You'd think that ghosts would just slowly leave behind a negligible amount of ectoplasma mist the same way that humans exhale trace amounts of water vapor when they breathe? And are you telling me that putting all that aside, no one's invented some kind of spell to get rid of this stuff, like just bewitch the walls to remove that stuff instantly? You can also cast Scourge to free items that have been trapped by ectoplasm. That's fucking gross. Although, to be honest, I'm surprised that this stuff is sticky rather than slippery. I'm sure if you stepped in a large puddle of snot, you'd slip and potentially fall over, but this stuff acts like a rubber semi-fluid or something. Ugh, look at that. It left behind green residue on the ground. Something just laughed. Either it's a ghost that's chuckling because I jumped down into this pit with no way out, or he just discovered that I had to clean up ecto shit. Okay, getting out was easy. Do I just do a running jump? Okay, good. Speaking of shit, hold still. Good. I hate these frogs in this game. Ectoplasm takes away some of your stamina. The longer you're in contact with ectoplasm, the more stamina you will lose. Yeah, if I came in contact with shit, I'd probably feel sick too. I wonder if they make Filch clean up after the students and their Scourge exercises. I bet Flickwick could make it disappear entirely in an instant, but an inexperienced second year might just be able to only get rid of the bulk of it at first, leaving behind that residue that someone else needs to clean up. And they'd probably make Filch do it just to give him something to do. Ugh, you can even hear Harry's feet stick to the ectoplasma residue as he walks across it. I wonder how injured fire crabs get when they hit each other with their flamethrower of liquid digestive juices. Are they immune to that sort of thing? If not, they probably kill each other more than anything else, especially when mating. Like they're just doing anal and all of a sudden, oh, I'm coming! Oh, I burned my dick off. Oh no, it's Peeves! If it isn't spotty, grotty, stotty, potty, water, I like your name. It rhymes with so many insulting things. What the fuck you say about my name? You know, last year, Flipendo worked just fine against Peeves, although maybe Scourge is a more powerful attack against ghosts. Might as well use it now, I suppose. Yeah, it sure looks like it, although he dodged a few of those hits, too. Makes me feel bad. Oh, I forgot I can't cast a spell through a gate, because that makes sense. Well, that's interesting. I unlocked something that wasn't behind the statue. Did something unlock in here, too? No, I went back too far. Although, now that I'm here, that'll teach you not to fucking exist. Fuck. Oh well. At least this gives me some new kind of puzzle to figure out. Is that the Bloody Baron again? Well, I don't know what I expected.
I can't tell if that's a friendly laugh or an evil laugh. Okay, so I guess that's gonna take me to the challenge star when I go through there. I'm gonna be mad if it doesn't. That's a weird torch. It kind of looks like the afterburner of a fighter jet if it was in slow motion. Oh great, now maybe I can't get back out to reach the unblocked room with the challenge star unless this current pathway takes me directly there. Let's see. Fucking frog. Oh, I'm back in this room now? Shut the fuck up! Fucking annoying assholes laughing at me. Well, here I am again. Wait, I already went that way earlier, didn't I? Yeah, there's a tipped cauldron back there. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's cool. What the hell am I hearing? There's an occasional audio glitch happening in this level. A tiny, very quick burst of static. And those cards just rocket out of the chest sometimes. I'm surprised you don't get a massive paper cut to the face. And by the way, there are so many more ways to severely injure yourself in these courses and of the game overall, and I've never seen Madame Pomfrey or the Hospital Wing referenced anywhere. These days, you're just expected to take care of yourself with a Wiganweld healing potion, so other than teaching you how to brew said potion, the school doesn't need to take care of you anymore. While I was talking, there was a platform with a snail symbol on it, so let's see what that activates when I push this sucker back down the hallway. Don't you just hate it when you're pushing a monster back with light and it keeps butting up against the wall? Oh, come on, that should be good enough. Well, it's still not totally on the tile. Doesn't the game simply detect whether or not the snail is on the platform? Or is it doing something else like detecting whether the monster simply moves across over the platform? I guess either way would work, but... I don't know. Great, now I'm also able to activate snail platforms as well. Useful, I suppose. Oh, I see. You can only climb up one side of that block. What are you doing? Did you really just try to charge at me by flying over the corner of that hole? What a fucking dumbass. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I was probably supposed to put one snail in here and another snail in the second hole between here and the gated door. But I'm not even sure if all that is necessary. I activated this first platform without needing a snail in the first place. So, the second platform should be able to be pushed down by me. Okay, fine. Whatever. Doesn't make a lot of sense, in my opinion. Why have snail icons at all? Maybe the developers were intending to just give you the snails as an option to push those platforms down and move through the room more quickly. That's actually handy if you wanted to play this level again while trying to do a speed run. Not that I'm interested in that personally, but others are, so, okay. <sighs> I'm just curious, though, if I push the snail into the other room, if anything will happen. Probably not, but just in case, we'll see. Of 
course now this one won't fucking move out of the corner so it can be pushed somewhere else. I don't have the ability to pull anything yet. Oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Now fucking stay still for a moment. Just long enough to... Oh, you fucker. I'm probably just wasting my time here. I'm not even sure why I'm trying to do something where I have a feeling that it probably won't do anything anyways. I can hear that other snail moving around. Okay, I give up. I don't know why I spent so much time trying to prove that some possibility that something could happen would in fact not happen, if that makes any sense. Harry, I swear to God, all you had to do was reach out and grab it. It's not like you're trying to catch a baseball moving at 40 miles an hour or something. It practically floated in front of your face for half a second, you just let it fall back down there. Fucking idiot. Why use an entire chest just to store two beans? While you're at it, buy a 1TB external hard drive and use it to store several megabytes of text and pictures. It's basically the same idea. Now, that is a Cornish pixie. Troublesome and annoying creatures they are. If they touch you, they will bite, so try to avoid them. Victor Sempera will stun them. A couple of episodes ago, I believe Lockhart mentioned something in class about Cornish pixies, but never showed them or explained anything about them like he did in such a spectacular fashion in the movie. I'll grab these real quick before jumping down the hole. Oh, what the fuck? Really? And I can even cast Alahamora on an already unlocked door again. I don't know what the point of that is. But anyways, why does Flitwick have to pick up the slack and explain some of the monsters that should be covered in defense against the dark arts, like those fire crabs and giant orange snails, which, to his credit at least, Lockhart did talk about to an extent, so he wasn't completely useless. What's that gonna do? Oh, I see. They were stuck together. <laughs> I was thinking for a second that removing some goo in the center of a platform would cause the platform as a whole to move in some direction. So... Oh god, don't touch me. Fuck. Shit. Go away. Go away. Oof. Fucking ghost. I mean, the Bloody Baron would fuck you up at the last game while you were roaming around the deeper areas of the dungeons. And I'm not sure why, either. Granted, he's not a pleasant character to have to deal with, but the first game acted like merely touching that ghost caused you some harm. And I'm pretty sure if I touched an nearly headless Nick, that wouldn't happen to me. They're both ghosts, so what's the big deal? In fact, I'm not even sure why ghosts are scary to begin with, aside from the jump scare factor. They can barely interact with anything tangible that's been left behind in the physical world, and you're a physical being, so how could they possibly hurt you? I never really understood that. Unless they possess you, which, yeah, I guess they can do that. Crap, more dancing shit nuggets. I guess I have to push that block down that hole, too. Well, that's interesting. It opens up multiple times. Okay, three is the limit. Shit. Fucking bloody baron. Alright, come over here, you fuckwads. A second health bar. Congratulations, Harry. While you spent several seconds posing heroically, the gnomes had time to recover, and now you have to knock them down all over again. I 
breach that? Good. So I guess the block goes down here. Not sure what it's going to land on, though. Oh, it's that lever. Oh, brilliant. That was just brilliant of me. I even knew what I was supposed to do ahead of time and still messed up. And of course, it won't let me reach the platform from here. And again, you'd think in a world full of magic, you'd have joints and stuff that wouldn't squeak so loudly. Or even at all. I'm not sure why I'm hearing random bursts of static in the left audio channel for a split second. That's not the first time I've heard that during this episode, and it's part of the actual game recording, too, rather than a microphone issue or a problem with my cheap preamp slash phantom power supply. It's not too big of a deal, but it's still weird. I don't even know if you'll be able to hear it when I'm finished editing. I kind of turn the game sound down a little bit. Okay, going that way... Lift Fuck you! Let's see, here we go. Well, what's the point of this? Oh, lucky guess. Who would have known? Oh, now what? Hmm. I could jump down there and end the lesson, or I could explore a bit more and see where this last staircase leads me to. For fuck's sake, I dealt with you once already in this episode. Why do you need to show up a second time? What is he doing anyways? Rocking back and forth on an invisible cock? Well done, Mr. Potter. You've completed my Scourge Challenge. The remaining time now becomes your personal high score. 8 out of 10. I don't know when I'm ever going to get all 10 challenge stars in a lesson. The weekly ass point ceremony is starting soon. Ugh, jeez. Again, I thought that was Ron for a second. I guess I'll follow whoever this is, though. I'm sure I can afford the silver card now, though. How about a trade? What do you have? I have a silver wizard card. Never even shuffled before. Is that just another way of saying that it's in mint condition? Your purchase will make you the envy of your friends, Harry. Oh, I forgot I was supposed to be following this guy. Hello, everyone. Looks like it's time for another house point ceremony. Let's see which house is ahead this week. Oh, it appears that Griffin Dwarf is in the lead. Harry, it looks like you get to visit the bonus beam room. I remember from last time that there were these doors blocked by ectoplasma, so now I should be able to get through those. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Should drink more water in between takes. Okay, an extension of this outdoor courtyard area is fine as long as there are still beans. I don't know what else I would expect behind a door. Still hope I can do Spongify soon. <sighs> Video's about over, so I've really got nothing else to say. Hmm. Uh, let's see. What can I talk about? The timer is almost over. Eh, fuck it, who cares?